there guys, so we're going to design and build a circuit that's capable of testing the reverse conduction characteristic for a Zener diode. And to do that we're going to use a N-channel MOSFET, it's one of those I've got here. And the one we're using is the 36NF06L and I've got its data sheet here. You can see a, a drawing or you can see an illustration of the pin numbers and we have 1, 2, 3. They correspond to the gate which is 1, the drain which is 2 and the source which is 3. When we get our MOSFET onto breadboard we're going to want to ensure that each of the legs goes onto a different track. So I'm just going to select somewhere in the middle of my board like that. I'm going to press in and there we are, that's the MOSFET set up and ready to go. Having a quick look at the output characteristics for this MOSFET, on this graph here we have the voltage drain source along the bottom and the drain current along the y-axis and these are different values of gate source voltage applied between the gate and the source. It's quite apparent from this graph that the MOSFET will switch on for uh, once we get a gate source voltage of about 4 volts the MOSFET will switch on and provide a steady current and then as the gate source voltage is raised the current raises as well in a relatively linear fashion and that allows us to be able to control the current through the MOSFET and allows it to act as a variable resistor which we can use to control the current through our Zener diode. The next thing we need to look at is the Zener itself. The one we're going to be using is the BZV55C5V1. As its name implies, the Zener voltage, the reverse breakdown voltage, will be 5.1 volts. For a Zener to operate correctly and ensure that we get 5.1 volts, we need to provide it with an operating current and the operating current for this center will be 5 milliamps as you can see from the data sheet here I'll try and highlight that it, while it's there Ooh. therefore in order to be able to get this current we need to make sure that R1 in our circuit will provide about 5 milliamps of current through the Zener to do this we can use a little bit of maths so I've got my calculator and just a little bit of circuit explanation at this point would also be beneficial we know from the data sheet for the MOSFET that adjusting the gate source voltage adjusts the drain current or increases the drain current through the MOSFET itself we can adjust the, the gate source voltage using a potentiometer here and by raising the value of the potentiometer, i.e. raising the gate source voltage, we can increase the current going through the Zener diode. The MOSFET, when it's fully switched on, will have very little resistance in comparison to R1. Therefore, the circuit voltage, 12.5 volts in this instance, will, will be dropped across the Zener diode and R1 and therefore R1 can be used to regulate the current flowing through the Zener so that it stays close to its operating point. All we would need to do to calculate a value for R1 is simply take our supply voltage in this instance 12.5 volts but it could be any voltage above the switch on within reason subtract the 5.1 volts we're going to lose across the Zener diode and divide it by the resistance to give us a current of about 5 milliamps. Therefore 12.5 minus 5.1 will give us 7.4 and we divide that by 1500 and you can see we've got roughly 5 milliamps there of current. So that's, that's how the circuit basically works and that's how we make sure that we've got a reasonable operating current for our Zener. <laughs>Hi then, here's our circuit. It's a little bit complicated, uh, especially with the uh, voltmeter and the ammeter in it, but we've got a power supply here 
And we calculated that that should be about 12.56 volts. So that's fine, that's all set up. We have the voltmeter, this is our voltmeter, and that's set up on the 20 volt range, DC, and we can see the connections which go across our xenodiode there. So I'll just zoom in on that so you can see that a bit better. And finally, the ammeter, which is set up. At the moment, I've got this on 20 milliamps. That's the range that it's on. And it's reading, let's have a look. Not a lot. Uh, less than a microamp, actually. And that is because our potentiometer at the moment is completely off. There's no voltage to the gate at all. Uh, I'm going to now start to adjust the voltage to the gate. Now, it's a little bit tricky especially with the screwdriver that I've got, but I will attempt to do it. So as we, as we begin to turn the potentiometer anti-clockwise, we'll note that we start to see a change in the current. The voltage across the zener at the moment is 4.6 volts, and our current's there. At the moment, if we just range that down, we can see it's about half a milliamp at 4.6 volts there. And we'll just keep going. And remember, the test that you're doing is to go between 4.8. So there's at 4.8, we've got 0.86 of a milliamp. And then we keep just nudging 4.9, 1.27 milliamps. About five, 2.11 milliamps. It's difficult to get it all in shot, actually. Just a bit more. If we keep going, we're at 5.1 and 3.5 milliamps. And I'm gonna put it fully over now, so we should have the supply voltage applied. See that I'm just adjusting that potential to there, and with the full supply voltage on the gate as calculated, the current through the zener is five milliamps, and the voltage across the zener is just over 5.1. So that's pretty good, okay.